Hello everybody, welcome to Golang View. I believe we're going to go as far as Kubernetes at some point and a full video series on how to build an app from scratch all the way from empty operating system to a full system you know on Kubernetes with Go and Vue and all that. Exciting, right? Okay, so I've already created a video series on Vue and Go but I thought I would do a more expanded video series and include some of the things I've learned, especially in the last six months. And I think that I'm going to do this video series in a slightly different way. So if you watch my other video series, you're going to probably see some repetition, but you're definitely going to see quite a bit of different things. And, and I think it's um, interesting either way. Uh, but if you are interested, uh, go ahead and take a look at my um, YouTube account and you'll see the other video series. I believe it's called like Golang Vue.js. I think that's, I don't, I don't know what the exact name is, but it's the only Golang Vue.js video series on my um, YouTube account. All right, guys, let's actually jump right in. So I have an empty operating system. This is just a virtual box uh, running Linux Mint 18.3. Uh, or 18 um, All I've done is just the basic, um, well, I need, I'll fix that in a second. The basic uh, update, upgrade, and distribution upgrade. And then I wrote myself some little notes because, for whatever reason, I can never remember these steps. I always end up um, referring to my notes. I don't know why I can never remember. <laughs> You'd think that the sheer number of times I've installed Go, I remember. But anyway, okay, uh, so here we go. So I'm going to actually close out of this terminal. I don't particularly like this terminal, so we're going to do um, some uh, setup. So this, video, this first video, if you already have your setup all ready to go and, you're, and you just want to jump into writing code, this video you can probably go ahead and skip past because I'm going to be doing just all setup on this video. Um, okay, so first let's go to our software manager and go get a functional terminal because I do not like the one that defaults with, uh, no, oh, with uh, Mint. So let's put my very complex, difficult to figure out password. Um, and then we'll go term Terminator. And we're going to just throw the icons over here, I guess, for now. I don't know. Just put them over there. And uh, let's remove this. Remo I don't really like Firefox. Okay, we'll go into our newer terminal here. Oh, let's go get a better browser. Um, in my opinion, I just like Google better, but, you know, teach their own. So we're, we're going to use Google um, Google's Chrome here. Um, let's see here. Download. Yes. Open. Give it a second to download. And 16, 15, 14. While it's downloading, let me just tell you. Um, well, actually, it's gonna be done here in a second. And come on. Okay. Come on, Mint. And our super secret password. Once that finishes, automatically close. And then we can close this down. Close tabs. Close this down. Okay. So now we have a browser we like, or at least I like, and a terminal that I like. Now what's next? Well, I, let's get a shell that I that I like. Yeah. I don't. I, I like to have a customized shell here. No, we don't want to do default browser there. So let's do O M I Z S H. And before we go down that route, we need to have curl and git. So sudo. Let's actually run this first command here. Um, so what this command here is doing is we're just installing, we'll get to that in a minute. This command here is just installing some basic packages that we're going to need for our, our system. So uh, some of these things we don't need like HTOP and, um, you know, if, if you're not doing all my ZSH, you're not going to need uh, ZSH. But some of these other things we're going to need for like Docker and uh, um, Node.js. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and run that command here. Let me... Uh, let me zoom in a little bit so you can read this. So there we go. So sudo apt install zsh curl git htop g plus plus build essential emacs. Well, if you don't like emacs, don't use emacs. Uh, apt transport https 
there's a space here, so this is a separate package. Um, anyway, uh, you know what? Let's just let's just type it out so you, you can see what's what I'm doing here. I think that was actually a mistake I made in my last video series. It's a lot of copy and pasting, so let's actually type this out together. So sudo apt install. We want zsh first, and we want curl. We're gonna need get at some point. Htop for checking resources. Not necessary, but nice to have. A C++ compiler, um, build essential, Emacs, uh, apt transport, HTTPS, let's say CA certificates, and software properties common. Okay. Pass here. Okay. Let it run. While it's doing that, we're going to go down here and get oh my zsh. Oops, I had to grab the edge over here. Okay, come on, unpack, unpack. Three, two, one. Okay. All right. Now we're going to install oh my zsh, like so. Put our super secret password here. Now we're going to say emacs.zshrc. We're going to uh, get rid of this, never show it again, dismiss. I don't really like Ruby Russell, Ruby Russell myself. I mean, well, the dude's cool, but uh, not my favorite theme. Um, use cloud. We're going to source that. There we go. And now we have a cool little um, bash with a lot of autocomplete, other cool stuff. We'll, we'll get into that later on exactly what's going on. This is just setup. Okay, so we're going to need Node.js for our client side and Go for our server side. So the very first thing we need to do is get uh, Node going. So let's uh, curl HTTPS deb dot node oops node source dot com setup. And we're going to use ten for this. We might downgrade to eight depending on how things go. Um, I think. It, 10 should be fine for what we're doing. Um, and sudo apt install node.js dash dash yes. If you're not familiar with some of these commands, uh, curl, we're going to get some, some resource of some sort. This is the address we're getting that resource at. We're going to pipe it into this command right here. Uh, and then we're going to run the next command here, which is just install node.js. So let's run this. You'll see it will go and get the node source, which updates your um, your source list. And then we run update, and then we install Node.js right here. Um, 15 meg download with 71 megs of usage. So, you know, not not much. Okay, then we can say node-v. We're good to go. npm-v. Okay, node's ready to go. So let's go ahead and get go now. Um, so first thing we go is we're actually going to need a project directory. So let's make a directory called projects, and then we'll say directory, oops, I should have done this one before, but projects, and then we'll say go source, and then go is also going to need a bin folder and a package folder, like so. Okay, now let's actually get the uh, um, go binary, so we'll curl, oops, curl HTTPS download.google.com forward slash go forward slash go uh, 1.11.2 is the current version of go out at the moment um, it's okay if you use a different version uh, go is backwards compatible so it's not a big deal um, and then we're gonna pipe that into well, I don't want to type it out we're just gonna do uh, tar.gz I don't want to type out that nasty um, file name there okay let that go it's kind of a big file so I think I'm going to pause until it's done. It looks like we're about done here. Okay. Now we need to essentially unzip this, right? So we use tar to do that. XVF, go. We'll create a go folder, like so. Then we'll move that uh, go folder to our local. And then. Uh, once we do that, we will source it. So I'll move the. Oh, did I miss the. Did I. So do move. User. 
What's going on here? Did I? Oh, I. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Pay attention, Nick. Okay. I'll remove this um, that file there. We don't need that anymore. Then let's go open up our our bash file. Let's um, source it to the path so we actually have access to go. We're gonna push all this stuff down here just so we have some room. We'll put we'll create aliases and stuff later on. Okay. So let's do uh, um, go. We'll say export go root, and that is the path we had set earlier, which is user local go and then we're going to export go path so go path is the path to your project essentially um and we're going to do home uh you can actually just do dollar sign user well my name is nick so we'll just do this for now Be, you, well, well okay we'll just do it this way so then, then it doesn't matter what the user is projects and then go like so and then we need to actually add those those uh, variables or the other two the environment variables to the path so we'll say path is equal to oops, equal to path, um, and then go root bin export path path go wait why go I messed that up that I was tightening stuff up there we go so basically anything anything we build in, in the go path will be have access to. Anything we build, anything we have in the Go root will be, uh, we'll have access to, like the Go binary, for example. So let's go ahead and save that. We'll source dot zshrc, zshrc, Go version. Yay, we have Go. And just to test it, we'll get a basic package. We'll say go get uh, GitHub dot com dot gorilla dot mux. Okay. So you can say projects, projects Go source github gorilla and mux you can see we have the gorilla mux project here so our go get is working okay there we go all right we're going to stay in our source folder for now um we'll make we'll, we'll go into make cd github we'll make our own uh folder here we'll call it um make uh a learning i'll well, we'll just call it learning cd learning Okay, now that we have Go and Node installed, we need to have an editor of some sort. Well, I like Visual Studio Code, and also I like Sublime, so, uh, but you know, choose what you want. In this video series, we're going to use uh, sub, um, Microsoft v Visual Studio Code because it's got some really cool um, stuff associated with Go, so I like using that. So let's go ahead and uh, download it. Uh, we're on Debian. There we go, and download. You can see my super fast internet. Um, so I get for living out here. We don't have the best internet choices, internet provider choices. Um, but actually, we do have a local company. It's not too bad. I, I I've been meaning to actually switch internet companies, but anyway, I'm not going to say anything about who what. But um, anyway, uh, yes, of course, I want to keep it. And then, um, there we go. Install, pass. Okay, we don't need this anymore. Close. Okay. And we are almost done with setup. Let's do some. Let's make a folder. We're going to call it, let's say, learning. We're going to say project, CD project code. Okay. Don't need that. Don't need this. Now, let's close out some of this junk here. We don't need that. We're going to say new file readme.md, new file.get ignore, which we will ignore. We're going to ignore any dist folders. We're going to ignore any node module folders. We're also going to ignore any vendor folders. I believe that's all we need to ignore for now. We'll add more later if we need more. Okay. We're going to call this a learning stuff. 
it doesn't matter what the name of the readme is save that okay now we're going to use this readme and we're oh, also going to create a make file as well make file um, we're going to use this readme file quite a bit for uh, just kind of storing information and and uh, um, just so we can there we go let's zoom in a little bit so you can see better um, there we go hopefully that's good enough uh, use this readme file to just kind of copy and paste things that we need that are interesting that we may use later commands these sort of things notes um, what not we we'll use our make file for building um, anytime we need to build and then we'll also create a scripts folder for complex things as well um, there we go and I think this is where we're all ready to go I don't want to do any more because I want this to be pure setup so all right all right uh, everybody hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you next time